Okay, here we are. <coughs> Pardon me, here we are. The ultrasonic cleaner. And just coming out to the garage. Oh, we're still at 70. Okay. So let's dump her in. Seventy degrees is pretty hot Celsius, right? Now we're a little low on water because I always dump out a little bit of the bottom to get rid of the uh, sediment. And that'll probably drop us a lot. Oh, we're coming back up 55, so I'm happy because I got a little bit of work to do before we get to this next step. All right, here's the carburetor for the Homolite. XP1020, I think that's what it's called. Close enough for now. Okay, so here's the rebuild kit for this guy. Now we're going to need some... I got these boxes at the liquor store. Don't, don't uh, tease me about what I got here. So there's the kit. Diaphragms. Not that much. I would have liked to have seen a few more O-rings, eh? Alright, so here's the, this is the secret to the whole saw. These are called reeds, and they open with suction, whoops, where are we? They open, you see that? With suction, and the, when the piston pulls down, these four reeds open. And I'm not sure if I should wash this, but it looks like there's absolutely no uh, plastic parts on here at all. So I think I'll be able to put this into the ultrasonic cleaner. Here's the mounting bolts. Very, very nice. Look what we got here. We got the old gasket and we got the new gasket. Identical. Nice. I'm not quite sure how much to take apart here. This one does not have an idle adjustment. There is an idle adjustment on the vacuum. Can you imagine that, eh? So that's probably the first thing we should get off. And if I'm not mistaken, this is reverse threaded. So let me just get the uh, body for this. So the carburetor sits in here like this. All right. And there we go. Nice, just in there like that. And this is an adjustment over here for the idle. That's something. So I'm going, and I think this is reverse thread if I'm not mistaken. So let's just get my best screwdriver out here. And if I go clockwise in, it comes out. There we are. And this is going to be a good video for me for referencing it. Eh? Okay, there must be a small hole back in there. A half inch wrench and a fairly thin one, eh? Oh, 760. My bad. <clears throat> okay. It looks like to me that's going to be on a stud. I think after... Well, how old is this thing? Fifty, fifty-seven years old. It's very typical. It's almost, it almost has a Tecumseh feel to it, eh? It's all going to get clean. This is the first step in the restoration assembly of this old 1020 chainsaw. Very 
Okay, you ready? Cool. They didn't give me this gasket. Pretty substantial though. It's almost a bake light. I'm going to leave that on there. One, two, there should be four of these. Good. And what I'm going to do, just for my reassembly peace of mind, is I'm going to pop these back on here. Are you with me on that? Yes, you are. Are you with me? So this is a huge day. We're, we're uh, on the final, the final steps to get this old saw running again. Leon from Leon's Chainsaws. Thank you very much for all your knowledge. You probably don't know who I am, but that's all right. Now let's have a look at the diaphragm. Do you think there's that many screws holding that diaphragm in there? It'll be one of these two. It'll be either this one or it'll be this one. <clears throat> it's not on very tight. I'm doing a crisscross removal. This is this is important. This is an antique. We have to treat it thus. I bet you I used both of those gaskets. Looks like one and two there. This is a 100cc chainsaw with no compression release. Can you believe it? It's like starting a 100cc motorcycle with a rope. It's all I can do to do it. I gotta do a kung fu move and then go to the doctor for another prescription of anti-inflammatories. Okay, here we go. Here we are. There's one. It's in good shape, eh? Probably because it's never seen ethanol fuel. Just keep working our way down here. Ah, there's the other one that's like this. And isn't it fantastic that I've got a video to put this back together again? Now, it's not that complicated, but... It's a little varnished up, not bad. Okay, so now this should just pull off of here, I guess. that off. I think that's our other gasket. Is there anything holding that on? Well, let's try this screw here. I don't... Oh, it's coming. And it's tight. Little guy. One over here too. Let's take them all. Oh, it's been Loctited. <laughs> Let's leave that one. So it's been worked on, guys. There we go. That's the hazards and the complaints of working in the north. Is furnaces running. There it is. Did you hear that? That's called music. There's the diaphragm. And the other gasket. <clears throat> so I'm going to move 
move stuff up. I'll take a picture of all of this too when we're done. Diaphragm. I'd love to save it if I could. Pretty sure that went like that. There's a spring in there too. Okay. It is not torn yet. But it is thin, baby. Are you guys getting this? I hope you are. So now we're here we are. We're taking the uh, diaphragm off. And it's just a bit sticky, but not bad. It's not very often I do a two-stroke with this big of a diaphragm, although that uh, three horsepower ice auger was close. About the same horsepower too. This is probably a, let's see, a 200cc Honda is 7 horsepower, so this would be 3.5 horsepower chainsaw. If we still measured them in HP. There we go, baby. Now, nothing's changed in 50 years. If you guys are familiar with, with how, uh, with how, small chainsaw carburetors work, it's exactly the same. I don't see a screen. Now, <clears throat> I'd like to get this brass screw out of here. That's to hold the needle and seat in. The needle and seat is right there. And the screw to hold it in is right there. The other screw I took out it's just a jet. So I have to get that screw out of there, but I don't want to hurt anything, right? It's already been rebuilt once. So let's... Uh, I don't think we need to muck with the, uh, with the butterfly. It looks good. But I'd love to get that needle and seat out of there. Did they send me a new one? Yes, they did. They did send me a new needle and seat. Where are you? Down there. There we go. Okay, let's see if we can turn it in or out. Yep, we got her. Yeah! We gotta make sure if it's a different size than the other one. The other brass screw we took out. Yes. Oh, there we go. So there's the sh there's the sh the retainer screw for the needle and seat. There's the fulcrum, the the needle, and the spring. Yeah. And a new seat. They even sent a new seat. How am I going to get that out of there? I want to get it out, although there may be no reason to. 
It looks clean. Hmm, I'll be right back, guys. It's the first time I've had to turn you on. Okay, we got her. This is my steel tool. And it's really nice. It's got a, an unbeveled screw at one end. And this fits here. Let's see if we can get this uh, seat out of here. Yes, siree. Oh my gosh, this old stuff's so nice to work on if it hasn't been abused. Oh, yeah, you're there. Here we are. Beautiful. So the only moving parts left now is the choke and the throttle. And I don't think it's worth jeopardizing the tightness of the butterflies on this setup. I'm just tightening them up. Oh, they're tight. I'm not going to muck with it. Okay, my friends. Let's give them a bath. Small parts. Should we wash these screws too? We'll shake that up after. That's not going to get washed. That's not going to get washed. That's big. That, that's not washed. That's not washed. And then this will get washed, even though it's not a fine, finite operation. And this, does this uh, screw have a seal? No. But these two do. Did I get two new screws? I didn't get anything for these screws. So we'll just, should we take them off? I think we should. Okay, <clears throat> so let's do this. Oh, we might as well wash those. I think they're the same size, left and right. Okay. It's quite a bit of stuff for one carburetor. Now come with me. Look up. We yep. No call rusty. That's for my Canadian friend. There's a little there was a show on TV years ago called Friendly Giant. Beautiful. Right? And we're going to wash them for 20 minutes. Temperature set to 60, right? We turn off the heat when she's running and we go start. Oop. <laughs> there we are, guys. Already stuff on Google's coming out of there. Thanks a lot. Let's just uh, set the basket. Ooh, that's hot. I'm here and we'll bring this over. Dump that out. We'll bring it over here. We got a few things. Come with me now. Turn you off. And now we're going to rinse these in water and then we're going to uh, reassemble this bad boy. We might just be able to get away with using uh, methyl hydrate. I think we can. Well, I got a small one. Okay, so let's do this.
and a little shot of air. Watch out! Good. Okay, this this gasket puffed up a little bit. Drying off so fast because I'm using methanol, right? Methyl hydrate. Oops, I knew that was going to happen. out of here. And just lay them out. And they're going to dry so fast. Good. I may have to reuse this uh, because there's a seal down in there that I can't get out. Okay, I'm going to reuse this seat. So this is the seat. I'm going to use, reuse it. Good. Because this one looks slightly different. Now what about the needle? The old needle is a little longer too, so we're going to use it. And so we might as well use the old spring. The old retainer. It was held in with Loctite before. That's all washed off now. That's nice, eh? wonder why they used Loctite. I might as well get some. Here, yeah, we're back. I'm going to get some Loctite. Oops. It's actually a really, really nice carburetor. It's nicer when the parts are just a tad bit bigger than what you used. Got to get the spring back in here. Great. Now, I'm just going to turn this in. All the way. I'm going to back it out a few threads. Squirt just a tiny bit of Loctite on there. That's lots. And tighten that back up. The reason why I'm just redoing what was done before is because you might just be copying the last guy who had trouble. Good. Great. Okay. Shouldn't need that anymore. All right, my friends, we're going to put this baby back together again. Now, one of my struggles was this thing. Uh, behind here, is a, it has a felt s skirt with a spring underneath. I'm not going to take it apart again. I had to really, really work it, work that felt. Let me just, you know me, i got to show you a little bit. Uh, where's that perfect extraction tool? Right here. If you see in there, the felt is folded over and there's a spring underneath on that shaft. There. That's all we're going to do with that. So now we're going to put this baby back together again with the new parts. Now we're putting the diaphragm on the carburetor. Uh, it can go, you can try and put it on both ways, but there's little detents that stick out and they only go on one way, right there like that. 
and then the diaphragm. And the round circle of the diaphragm pushes on this. and activates the needle and seat. And there we are. All right, I, uh, I've added the intake manifold on here. We've got the, the uh, diaphragm that actuates the needle on here. We're gonna stick this on here for now, uh, right on top. And now, yeah, on this case, you want this is the fuel pump, and you want the fuel pump to be over top of these two holes on the uh, on the gas inlet here. So we stick this gasket on here now. Oh, maybe we got it backwards. Here we go. We got it backwards. That's really easy to do. Here we go. One, two, three. And then we take this. Like that. Did you get that? So now there we are. And then we screw it together. We'll just get these two in and we'll be done. We don't have to show you the other four. I took apart this carburetor and the skinny, the skinny adjuster came out of the H and the fat adjuster came out of the L. Now, this is, the, this is the throttle adjustment, and it goes in on a reverse thread. Craziest thing I've ever seen. So like all of them, I'm going to take it down to one and a half turns. Seems loose. But everything should run at one and a half turns. Both down. Half, one and a half. Everything's going to be rich. But these old homolites love rich. Half, one and a half. Okay. Ta da! Where are you? Ta da! Hope I got that for you. All right. Here we are. We are holding at six pounds on an old, old 54-year-old carburetor and I don't think we're seeing any, I can't really even find any bubbles. I was getting bubbles out of the H mixture before I put in the screws, but we're holding at six, so that's good. These things probably aren't used to running like this, so I've pressure tested the uh, uh, before this, I pressure tested the crankcase, and now I've pressure tested the carburetor, uh, so we should be good. And I've double checked all my gaskets, so yeah, we're away. Seven pounds, baby. Okay, guys, I mention this most of the time. I got this pump from as a gift from Ken Small Engines, the Mr. Mow It All. Go to his. Go to his channel, subscribe, like, ring the bell, do everything you got to do. He's been a real big help to me. He's really, really smart. Thank you.